Welcome to our series, How to Pray. I'm Professor Avram Apatow, and today we're going to speak about the topic, the Temple of God. What is the Temple of God? It is this very picture that the Shla Kodesh describes. That is the picture of the universe. And I have to share with you that I, have re I, re I did this translation a few years ago, but only since I did this presentation did I actually try to put into more specific practice what the Shla recommends, that is to meditate and contemplate these ideas before one begins to pray in the morning. And it is extremely, extremely powerful and I encourage you to try to take a few minutes either to read that or after you've read it a few times just to go through your own kind of guided meditation and you'll see that you will develop a much powerful more vivid connection with God in, in your daily life and especially in your prayers. Now why would we say that the universe is the temple of God? Well, it's, it's a very interesting historical um, evidence we have that the Roman and Greek writers, when they described the Jewish religion, they said these people, they don't worship images of God like other other peoples. They worship a God without images. And they worship the God. They Actually, their image of God is the universe. Now, that may say, seem kind of strange to us. Well, isn't that kind of a pagan view that the world is God, pantheism or something? But I think that there's something very profound in what they're saying. And I think a very good way to understand that is a, is a is a Gemara from Brachot on page 10 that says that God fills the universe like the soul fills the body. And just like the soul is not seen, but is present in the body, God is also not seen, but his presence is in the, in the, in the universe. And we, we say in our tradition that the glory and presence of God fills the whole earth. It fills every part of the universe. Well, in that sense, if his glory is everywhere, then the entire universe is his temple. And as we spoke about in the previous presentation, man is a microcosm of the universe, and also man is a microcosm of God. So in the same way, the whole universe is also an image of God and a microcosm of God or his divine um, wisdom and intelligence. And what is a temple? A temple is a place where the presence of God can be felt. So even though we, we long to build our temple for God in Jerusalem, God says he wants to build a place to dwell among us, within each, uh, each Jewish person, each human being, perhaps. Well, in the same way, his presence also fills the entire universe. So we can talk about the entire universe being a temple of God. And in fact, that's what ancient Jews did believe. And this explains why it's so important to have this vivid cosmology in our imagination, because that cosmological picture becomes the very temple and the, and the way we can relate to God. Now this picture has a, a couple of elements in it that is very foreign to us. The idea of the spheres, the idea of the angels, all the categorizations of different kinds of life from the animate inanimate, and so forth. How do we understand these? How do we develop our picture around these ideas that are foreign to our education and culture? First of all, we have to realize our modern world has what is called a flat picture of the universe. In the modern scientific view of the universe, there's only physical experience. There's nothing else. There's nothing beyond that physical experience. Everything that's described and experienced and observed by scientists is called ultimately physical. Even energy is physical. 
the ancients did not have a flat picture of the world. They had a metaphysical picture that there's something beyond the physical, the spiritual, the angelic, the, for, the, uh, the kind of divine force within nature. So why did they need this? Why didn't they just have a physical picture? Well, it's a very easy way to see why that's needed. If you look at any of the basic elements of the scientific picture, if you say, energy, what is energy? No scientist can give you an answer. They can describe the effects of energy. They can quantify energy. But they can't tell you what it is. For example, gravity, that's a force. They say, but they're just describing how that force is characterized between the relationship between bodies. But what that force is in itself, they have no idea. So the whole idea of motion and energy, power in the universe, is a complete mystery. Well, that mystery is how they described the spiritual in the ancient world. They didn't leave it just a mystery. They said, ultimately, there has to be a chain of motion within the universe. There has to be a first mover. So the ultimate source of all energy and power in the universe is God. And that power is extended from that infinite source, the first mover, through a chain of beings that relate more closely to our physical world. So from the highest heavens, the furthest um, distance from our physicality, that is one aspect of God. And God has a chain of angelic forces and intermediary beings and spiritual intelligences that guide the entire universe. Just like in our beautiful metaphor of the body, just how we have this nerve network where we have this electricity running through it and, and guiding all the, the motions of our body. In the same way, God has a, a network of of energy and intelligence and wisdom guiding the entire universe through a kind of spiritual chain from the highest, most uh, divine spiritual and power to lower levels that come more closely to our physicality.